what happens if Marshall University is accredited, but this program is not? So you spend all this money, all this time, all this energy into this program. You've graduated from an accredited school, but not an accredited program. You're in a nightmare. So you now have a, you have a diploma that is not worth the paper that is written on. This happens all the time, especially with online schools. Online schools are going to start targeting you now. If you start putting stuff out there, when you do a Google search engine, you're going to start seeing these online schools flopping up. They pay for this. They pay for cookies to track you guys down. I mean, it's kind of something like they're stalking you, but it kind of sort of are. They're trying to get a hold of you to accept into these schools. They're going to cost a lot more money, and a lot of times they're not accredited. So please make sure that they are accredited. These are the two accreditation par parties. Please look at this. Please research the schools you're going for. So when you're researching these schools, the most important thing to think about also is these faculty. This is LinkedIn.com. Go into LinkedIn.com and stalk your faculty that you're applying to. The reason is, let's say that you want to go to school and you want to study animals, but you are really big into PETA. You do not want to do animal testing. But you're applying to a program where all the faculty members are all into animal testing. You write your graduate school essay about how you don't like animal testing. They read it and they go, didn't she not do her research? You want to make sure you're doing your research on these faculty members, especially for some of these schools. Are these faculty members qualified to be teaching the classes that they're teaching? Sometimes they're not. You want to make sure they are. Look at the entrance requirements. There's two different kind of entrance requirements. There are the admissions and also the graduate school. So let's say that you do all the things you need to do to get into the graduate school of your, pro your choice. There's also the admissions group too. So you may not be required to take the GRE for your department, but you are for admissions. You've got to read both of your qualifications. Make sure you look at the length of your program. Some people come to my office and say, oh, it's a two-year program. But I'm like, yeah, but there's a whole entire year extra practicum. It's a three-year program. Are you willing to work this three years of your life? Program rankings. Just because it's the top program may not be the program for you. So make sure that you are looking into these programs, visiting these places. Accreditation, financial aid opportunities. There are financial aid opportunities to go to graduate school. We have students who graduate every year who have a full ride, do not pay anything out of their pocket. They even get money for expenses for, for buying food. There is money out there. You just have to know and know when to apply for them. Is it online, in the classroom, or hybrid? I've had students last year who lasted one week in an online program because it was so hard. One week. Make sure. What kind of learner are you? Are you going to be able to handle an online environment? If you are considering that, you may want to take an online class at LaGrange College just to try it out. So the warning signs. When you're looking into it, and I include this too for a job, if you're looking at jobs or in graduate school, this is in the warning ball the signs. Few assignments. Few qualifications, they are pursuing you hard. Let's say if you have a 4.0 average, great GRE score, that's one thing. But if you're not the top student, why are they pursuing you so hard? What do, they, what do you have to offer? Really do a reality check because they may just be trying to get you just for your money. Or you might have something to offer, so you just have to make sure. And it may just be too good to be true. If it sounds too good to be true, this is for jobs as well as um, graduate school, it probably is. So really look at the requirements. I work with students daily and going to graduate school, and the things that they run into, these are the, usually the hiccups that they run into. Looking at the graduate school and admissions requirements, do they, do they change, are they the same? Testing, usually every graduate school, anybody in here art or science, art or music? No. Usually you, they don't have to take the GRE or any testing, but sometimes they do. Um, essay, the writing sample, I've actually had students in the applications write a sentence in the essay. I had three or four students who've done this in the past. I've actually gotten phone calls from the admissions counselor saying, you need to talk to your students. You're writing one sentence in the application process. That is not what they're looking for. They're looking for top-notch writing samples. Transcripts. If you do not pay LaGrange College your, all your bills, they will not give you your transcripts. I have students who were accepted pending their transcript and had to pay LaGrange College, defer for a year until they can get their transcript paid for to be able to go to graduate school. Same thing with employment. This has happened as well. They are guaranteed employment with that transcript, but they have not paid off their, 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 their loans here. So make sure you find out where you are in that application process with that. A CV, a resume, and a portfolio. So when you're filling out your applications for jobs or for graduate school, real important things is spelling counts. If you mess up on your spelling, you are guaranteed just to weed yourself out. Mistakes do count against you. Dates count against you. Make sure you proof and proof again. Cut and paste. Type it into a Microsoft Word document and paste it into your application. If they're going to tell you not to do that, do it. Because they're just trying to get you just to write it, just to see how you write. You want to make sure you do that. So, looking at the different programs. Anybody in here thinking about medical school? No? Oh, okay, good. Medical school. This is the medical school process. 
can read all the different courses of this. If you have friends who are thinking about medical school, it is a process trying to take the test for medical school. So there's, um, there's all kinds of things you're going to have to do. And one of the things you're going to have to do is the application system. This is the Medical College Application Services System. 143 colleges use this system. It's got a certain uh, opening. It's about to close. If you're thinking about medical school, it's getting ready to close. And then if you don't apply by a certain date of that school that you're applying to, it's too late. You have to wait until next year. Anybody think about veterinary school? Veterinary school, same thing. They have an application process. GRE, this is pretty much for anybody who is going to graduate school is a GRE. This costs about $185. Anybody here taking the GRE yet? Am I taking the practice GRE? We're offering that. Great. We're offering that right here underneath the vents. You got free. You can take this online. I highly recommend it. You want to take it three or four different times. Most people bomb the GRE the first time just because you're not used to this type of testing environment. Luckily, they have taken off the analogies, which really gets people. And you can see the cost. Medical college, if you look at this, there's a lot of stuff that goes into medical college. Um, do your research about this. They only offer it a couple of times during the year. And then also now they just completely changed their fee schedule. So if you want to get, look at the prices here. So you got to plan out your prices if you're thinking about medical school. Dental exam, it's a five-hour test. You're looking at, they might have been computer at dental school. Great, dental school, yes. And the cost is about $320 or more. So we'll book that in advance too because you want to book 60 to 90 days before the actual testing date or you're, you missed out. Optometry, you might think about going to be a optometrist. Okay, great, great. Again, to $270, and they go up every year, so you want to check on that. Four hours and 40 minutes is a long time, too. So you want to plan your time out. Most people will say, I'm going to go out to eat after I take this test. Most people sleep after taking this test. Some people actually get a hotel room because they're not able to drive after taking some of these tests. These are extensive tests. Pharmacy college, anybody think about pharmacy? Great, great pharmacy school. Um, this is interesting. It only lasts two years, so if you take the PCAT, it's only good for two years. GRE is good for five years. Certain other places will only take it after three years, so you got to check to see your school. What are they going to take it for? It's a first come, first serve. And law school. Am I thinking about law school? Uh, law school. And then um, anybody thinking about business? A couple. I see a couple of business in here. Yeah. You want to start looking into this, too. $250, they go up every year as well. So you want to definitely check this all out. Any nursing majors? Ah, nursing majors. Yes, luckily for the nursing department people, you guys are actually trained in hand clutch. They give you a lot of classes in this, but be prepared. It's, it does cost it's six, hour, six hours, is I think the maximum you can use for that. So definitely look at that too. Okay, so scores do not last forever, about five years. Accommodations are available. If you have a disability, if you are pregnant, if you have any kind of disability that's documented, you can actually get extended testing time, extra breaks, but you must apply early. Do not wait for the last minute, because accommodations, <coughs> I tell people, I work with students who have need to have accommodations. Some take advantage of it, some do not. The ones that take advantage of it do better. The ones who did not end up taking advantage of it later on, because it is tough. We're talking about extensive four hours or more. And fee waivers are available. And go online, see if you are eligible for a fee waiver. We have students who are able to get their testing for free. Okay. So, one thing I need to do is a transcript using a couple copies, two official and one official. Anybody been on Banner before where you can get an unofficial copy, you can cut and paste it into a Microsoft Word document. That can count if you're turning in your transcripts for the unofficial copy. There's two types that you're going to be needing to think about, a resume and a CV. A resume is when you're applying for jobs, a CV is when you're going to graduate school. A CV is a lot longer than a resume. Resume is one page, kind of sort of just hitting it hard about these are my skills. CV is about expanding all things you've done in. Now, anybody who does do work study, great. That can be counted on your resume and your CV. Anybody here doing an internship or done an internship, great. CV or your transcript. These are the things you have to put onto your CV and your resume because this is the stuff that they're looking at. Anybody here have any research experience? Okay, if you do not, start looking into that. Graduate schools want that. Some employers are looking at research experience as well, TAs, those kind of things like that. These are the things you want to include on your CV. The biggest mistake I have gotten the phone calls about from graduate school is people forget to put down LaGrange College. I know it sounds simple, but people do because they think, well, I'm already in it. They know I'm applying for LaGrange College. You've got to include that. Looking at all the different things here, these are the things they're expecting you to have on your CV. A lot of employers now are expecting you to have this on your resume. For your freshmen through juniors, you have time to get this stuff on there. Seniors, if you do not, you can work on this too. There's a little bit more panic. On the CV and on a resume, a couple things to think about when you're developing this now. You want to start working on this now. And I'm, the reason I put this on here, I've gotten three resumes this year with social security numbers on it. 
you were opening your door up for someone to steal your information. Not only did they have your address, your name, they also have your social security number. Make sure you take that off. Discrimination with your birth date, do not include your birth date, they will discriminate against you. Do not include anything about your race, your height, your weight, unless you're an actor. This is really important to remember. And you can't include I, my, you will automatically be screened out. And I'm including just for jobs too. If you use I or my on your resume, they'll screen you out. They just have to look at a different way of doing it. And CVs are usually two pages long. So essays. This is the sum that gets everybody hooked up, is essays. Now, we have a book on this to start writing on this. So one thing you want to think about is, what was your aha moment? And this includes two for when you're going for a job. What was your aha moment? I want to become a math major or I want to become a science major, or I want to go into business. What was that moment on nursing? What was that moment that said, hey, I really want to do this? That's what they're wanting you to focus on in your essay, statement of purpose. Now, they're going to ask you lots of other questions, too. And I see over and over again a wonderful essay, a wonderful really written essay, but it does not answer the question that they are asking. Now, you got to look about how can I not be boring? How can I separate myself from the pack? This is one example right here. If somebody just cast her right here, just cast her or put somebody to sleep, we got an essay in a couple of years ago that was unbelievable, comparing a football touchdown to working in the ER. His essay was unbelievable, and he was accepted to medical school. So doing something outside the box, get people to read what you're having to say. Oh, and this is one example. A one that was a little bit more me with that. You can read that part of that. More of a story, more of a narrative. What are you having to say about going to this place? Why should they accept you? Why should they invest in you? That's the most important thing to think about. What All of you in this room need to think about what are your six strengths? What are your six strengths that are transferable to a place of employment or into graduate school? If you cannot think off the top of your head right now, six strengths, you need to work on that. And then in turn, flip side, what are your three weaknesses? What are three weaknesses that you have that you can work on? I'm not saying I have a time management issue. You want to have something that you can work on. You would need to think about three weaknesses. These are the questions that are going to not only ask you in a graduate school interview, but also in a job interview. Six strengths, three weaknesses. You want to have three weaknesses in the back of your head because you're going to have that person going, oh, I don't like that weakness, give me another one. Oh, I don't like that weakness, give me another one. You want to have those prepared. Six strengths and three weaknesses. Okay, so you're writing samples, make sure you get something to proofread it. I've had student after student just turn it in. Don't do that. No one can prove your own work. I can't even prove my own work. You want to have somebody else do it. You have the writing center here. You have your professors here. Have somebody else look over it. Recommendation letters for jobs and for graduate school, you're going to have to have at least three. You're going to want to start thinking about who can these people be. Start targeting those people. If you're showing up to this class late every day in your pajamas, that's probably not the person you want to be asking to be your reference letter. You can't ask somebody like me in the career center. I may supervise internships, but I've never seen you actually at the internship repetitively. You want to find someone who's seen you in action. A professor that's seen you in action, people who've supervised you in work state that's seen you in action to write these recommendation letters for you. And you want to make sure you ask them early. Make sure, do they know your name? Do they know your strengths? Do they know your weaknesses? Give them a copy of your CV. Make sure you ask five to six weeks in advance, especially for graduate school. You're talking about a lot of work. You do not want a mediocre recommendation letter. I had a student a couple years ago who was furious with our past president because she got him to write a recommendation letter for her. It was lukewarm. The reason why it was lukewarm, he really didn't know her. I was surprised he even agreed to write it. Lukewarm recommendation letters are worse than no recommendation letter because what they're doing is they're thinking, I'm going to read between the lines. What are they really saying about this candidate? So you want to make sure that you ask these people and make sure that they're going to give you a strong recommendation letter. And make sure that you give them a thank you card because this is nice of them to do this for you and keep them informed about what's going on. They want to know what happens with you. Okay, so you can get your college paid for. If you have a good GPA, good testing class, test, you can start looking for fellowships and TA positions. Any here, anybody in here play sport? There are graduate school opportunities for you to be a coach, assistant coach, kind of like the GAs you see right now running around on campus to get their school paid for. You can apply for those early also. But you need to look for these things. Anybody ever been to UGA's website? Everybody's been there looking for it. Okay, UGA's website is very, very complex, very, very hard to find because they've layered all their websites together, so it's really hard to find information. You have to Google. A lot of websites you need to Google this information. Bing sometimes will bring it up, but Google mostly. You type in teaching fellowships for the University of Georgia in blank. A lot of times it will flop up for you. And the deadlines for these are before the application deadline for graduate school. This is very important for people who are thinking about going to be assistant coaching while you're going to school. They do those early. So you want to make sure that you apply for both of these. And then the interview. 
jobs and also for graduate school, you're going to end up in an interview. But in graduate school interviews, usually they're half a day long or a whole day long. You're going to be sitting there in front of the panel. People are going to be asking you questions in the panel interview. This happens in job interviews as well. One-on-one -on -one for a little bit, panel interview, then you get to go talk to some students who are actually in the program. This is where the six strengths come into play and your three weaknesses come into play too. Everybody is doing behavioral interviewing right now. That is when they put you in a situation and they want to see how you handle it. Tell me about a time you had to deal with a crisis. Tell me about a time you had to deal with conflict. You can pull from anything, anything from your sports, from your work students, from home life, from everything. You can pull from anything in these interviews. This is for graduate school and also for jobs. What a lot of people get hung up on though is they start thinking too narrow. They start thinking, oh, I can only talk about my classroom experience. Oh, I can only talk about this. Or they go off on a tangent. You're supposed to answer these questions between three, two and three minutes long. You gotta practice these things out. It throws people off. Behavioral interviewing is very, 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 very used in the medical community. So if you're going for a PT position, you're going to medical school, you're going for nursing, behavioral interviewing is what they're gonna put you in. And if you've never experienced it before and you walk in just without the, any of this research, you're gonna fail the interview. It happens every year. So you gotta practice. We do this in our office to practice. And bring a portfolio, and everybody's interviewing you. I've actually had this happen before. People have gone to a writer school interview, and someone's sitting in the corner, like a student, you know, the baseball cap, just kind of sitting there, and they're rude to them. Turns out they're actually on the committee. They're just kind of sort of strategically placed there just to see how you handle yourself around other people. This actually happens. People are trying to weed people out. We want the best of the best to be going to our graduate school, the best of the best to come to work for our employer. So they want to figure out, are you worth it that way? You need to create a portfolio. It's a thin little book, just to kind of sort of highlight the things you have done. If you have nothing to put in your portfolio, start working on that now to put that in your portfolio for jobs and for graduate school. Keeping it short, your resume, awards, copies of your recommendation letters. We're talking about anybody who needs to be a recommendation letter. A coach, I've actually had people write, have their teammates write each other recommendation letters. People have their sorority, person who's in charge of them. You can get anybody to write a recommendation letter to put this in your book about it, but they have to have seen you in action to write a good recommendation letter for you. Pictures of you doing things, painting a house, working with kids. Now, one thing to think about too, for both jobs and graduate school is professional branding. I have seen it over and over and over again. People are looking up you online before you come in for a graduate school interview and also for employment. I had one student, when he sat down for his interview for, for dental school, the first question they asked him was, how was that party on Friday night? Was it called Superfly, Dell Fraternity? He was completely floored. Luckily, he had cleaned up his Facebook account before he went on to this interview. But they knew, they did their research. They're not gonna invest in somebody that's out there partying all the time. They wanna have somebody who's gonna be a good doctor, a good lawyer, a good dentist. You wanna have somebody they can invest in. So make sure you clean up your Facebook account, lock it down, but be careful what you post. Usually what I see over and over again is people who get into that friendly banter during the game time, Auburn versus UGA or something like that, and you're having a great <coughs> time knocking each other down, but when somebody on the outside looks in, they're like, God, this person's got a mouth on them. They just can't seem to keep it together. They have an anger issue. So you want to make sure what are you posting on these things. This is some things we pulled off a couple of years ago. I went on a graduate school interview today and the interviewer was a blank. I got this offline, not from the Grange College, just online. Um, I hate my job, I hate my boss. Pretend to work today in my favor. Give me a presentation today in class. I hope I sober up in time. And I tell people again, I ran a conference and one of our speakers was late. I went on Facebook to find out his information and he had been drunk the night before. So he came in saying he was sick. I knew he was not. And let me just say the whole entire conference committee was furious with him. He did an okay job, but he was not recommended to ever come to a conference again. People look at these things. They want to invest the money good. So use your social media for your advantage. Whatever you have on your resume and CV, put it on your Facebook account. Make it easy for them to find. Unlock those kind of photos of you doing great things. But all of you, before you leave here, what you want to do is Google your name and then click <coughs> images. Then your name. Click images. You'll be surprised how many of you guys have your Facebook images are being utilized and Google images and Bing images. We're seeing more and more so since all the different changes going on on Facebook. So you definitely want to check this out because they're going to do that. LinkedIn, highly recommend this. Create this whenever somebody Googles your name. LinkedIn is the first thing that's going to flop up. You can make this into your professional page, your resume. You download your resume on that. So there's a lot of information fast. The Career Center is doing a test drive right now. If you go to lagrange.edu slash careers and click on events, these are all the different tests you can take online for as many times as you want to. I recommend doing this. Students who start doing this their freshman year do a heck of a whole lot better their senior and junior year without having to take these tests than the ones who are just waiting for their senior year. Graduate school, the one thing about graduate school you always got to remember you got to plan ahead. It's a lot of work. We just have a lot of work. That's just 
helping, just scraping the surface about going to graduate school. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of tests involved, a lot of peak players involved. So you gotta start looking around, start looking at faculty members that can help you. There's faculty members around here, Dr. Ernstberger in the back. We have lots of faculty members here who want to help you, help you get those research experience. There's teaching assistantships that we have on campus right now, teaching fellowships. There's money out there for doing research. So is there anything else you can think of that? To help get, get them into graduate school? Yeah. Um, no, but I have a few more things to add if you're willing. Yes, if you're please willing. add some more. Um, so, so use us, like she's saying. We, um, we look at you like our kids. I mean, it is really that incredible. And so when you go and you visit Ms. Goldwater, the Career Center, remember still that we are very invested in seeing you get to graduate school and seeing you do well. Um, I keep up with a handful of students who I've had in the past who are in graduate school now. It's really wonderful. It's really amazing. Um, I'm going to throw a few more things out there to kind of tag along with what um, Diana said. The first is if you're in a hard science, you should consider applying to the PhD program and not a master's program. And the reason is they're going to hand you more money. I did not pay a dime for my graduate career. Five years at a top 15 research one school, I did not pay a dime. In fact, we saved money, bought a house, bought a car, and had a child. Um, I mean, there is money in science. It's not a bad choice. It's a lot of fun. Um, go for the PhD. If you go for the master's degree, you're not going to get the funding. Um, when you're going to ask for letter writers, like she was talking about, pick the person you want to choose wisely and then make your presentation well. Show up at their door. Ask them personally. Don't send them an email. Don't shoot them a Facebook message or a text message. Go there with the information of the schools to whom they have to write the letters, with envelopes, postage, and due dates. A table is very wise. Make a table, like a grid, that says to this school by this date, here's the postage for it and here's an envelope with the addresses already printed on it. I'm really not kidding. We grumble when people don't do this. And make sure you give them the date that's actually ahead of time. Don't give them the actual date because that's just, you're just asking for trouble. Give them ahead of time. And it is perfectly okay to send us a reminder email as long as it's polite. Remember, we're still writing the letters of recommendation and we may not have written them yet. Um, so, uh, like she said also, the letter readers read between the lines and the letter writers, we write between the lines. So, there are some people whom I have been thrilled to write their letters, and there are some people that I have um, struggled to write their letters, and that's visible in the letter, okay? Um, ooh, you're going to have an option to waive whether you can see that letter of recommendation or not, and we know whether you've waived that or not. So you need to check to waive to see the letter of recommendation that your letter writers are writing for you, because otherwise we're gonna change it and it's not gonna be a really honest appraisal of you. Um, they look highly upon that. If you waive it, the graduate school will look better on the recommendation letter than if you don't it. Absolutely. And I wanna, I wanna piggyback on one more thing that Ms. Goldwire said, which was, um, when you go and you're doing the interviews, pay attention to how you compose yourself, how you're nice to people in the room. Remember who you're going to talk to. You're going to talk to people who pull in seven or eight digit figures in grant money, a lot of times in the sciences. They're not clueless. These are very, very bright people. And when you go into the room, how you compose yourself, how you're dressed, how you sit, if you twiddle your fingers, if you look away from them when you talk at them. All these things, and I know I'm making you nervous, right? All these things build your impression of, of you to them, and they notice this. They notice how you tie your shoes, if your socks are down at your ankles, because they are observant people, okay? Put on the very best image you can. And shoes you can walk in. Isn't Absolutely. Nice we actually had a, um, a candidate a couple years ago, one of our alums, that went for a graduate school interview, and they watched him from when he rode his motorcycle, motorcycle up to the actual graduate school. How he took off his motorcycle gear and how he carefully placed it into the back. They mm -hmm. actually took note of that, and when he came in and talked to them, he goes, we really did um, enjoy the way that you took care of your, your property. We know that you'll probably take good care of our property. They watch everything you do. And so if you're the one that's getting dressed in the parking lot or the one who is um, trying to pull yourself together in the bathroom, people are watching, everybody's watching you. Again, there's a lot of money they're thinking about. They want to make sure they're invested in it so that it's worth investing in. 
that's going to go through the program and survive the program. Yeah, remember, you get health insurance, too, well, like a lot of graduate mm -hmm. schools. Yep. Health insurance. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions that you guys may have? Anybody excited about going to graduate school now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plan ahead. Okay, so I will give you one statistic. Last year, we had 36% of our students applied to graduate school. 17% got in. Now this and decided to go. Now a lot of people did get in, but they decided they didn't want to go. Or some people just didn't do their applications until the last minute. I recommend that with the 17% they got in, they worked early. They got <coughs> recommendation letters early. They applied early. Early is the key. You got to plan this out. Get a notebook. Start keeping up with things because you, if you miss those deadlines, like the medical college and veterinarian school, if you miss those deadlines, too bad. Next year, they don't care. You can ask for an extension. They're gonna say I'm sorry. There's 500 people asking for an extension. Apply <coughs> early. I wish the best of luck to all of you guys. Absolutely. Let's give this go by a round of applause.